Hello and welcome to Karibuni Dikoni. This is Let Me Cook Your Dish. My name is Chef Carol and today I have a guest, like always, on Let Me Cook Your Dish. My guest name is Wambo Njao, a fantastic lady. She's looking beautiful. And <laughs> welcome to Karibuni Dikoni Wamboi. And thank you for making time to join me on my show. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much for inviting me. I was looking forward to this. As you know, I'm one of your great fans. I just watch you in Koroga in the morning on Sunday morning. Kehosho, Kehosho Savage, I think is amazing. And just your cooking. I think the food tastes, Thank I'm you. sure your food tastes very good because of the... It uh, does, at least the, the dancing that goes with it. But uh, thank you for inviting me to your program. Thank you. And before we continue, I have to say uh, my condolences. Your Shosho died yesterday. Yes. Uh, I know it's yeah. a difficult. Thank you. A, lo a loved one uh, passes away. Yeah, yeah. Very special yeah. Shosho to me. And, and for 100 years, she was blessed. But she was still my show show and, um, and the fact that I won't see her when I go to Kenya is, is oh. painful. Yeah, I know. And I she know. meant a lot to me in my life, in my life from a young age, oh. to even older age. Yeah, very, yeah, very she, wonderful but She's woman. looking from, from, from above and uh, she's, she's definitely very proud of you. I'm sure, I'm sure she is. So and I, I, thank, I thank her for her life and I thank God that she kept her well and healthy for up to, you know, 100 years is no joke. Eh? <laughs> I know, I know. And happy birthday to your daughter. She has... Uh, yes. Yeah. That's, yeah. So it's a blessing in disguise. It's a blessing in disguise. So that's, that's how life is. Yeah. Yeah. So and she's been given that one. Now you carry on with that. She, so even yeah. that's why I wanted us to have that Zoom meeting with her, a short party for her this morning. Mm. Just to remind her that it was a blessing for her to know her grandma. So yeah, so my daughter turned 26 today. Wow, wow. And, and it's, uh, yeah, so 26 is a special day. It is. Yeah, a very special May day. May and uh, 26 years, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, one boy. Um, you asked me to cook your favorite dish. Yes. Which is bajias. So I'm doing potato bajias and uh, onions bajias. Mm -hmm. And I'm also doing some chutney, mm -hmm. coconut tomato chutney with some chili. That's what I'll be doing while you tell us your story. For those <laughs> yes. who don't know Amboy, she's an IT project manager. She lives in the UK. So how long have you lived in the UK, Amboy? I have been in the UK since uh, 1980. I think we moved here in 89. So we are talking almost 30 years ago, 30, 30, 31 years ago, I think. Yeah, so I've been here for a, for a long, long time. But uh, yeah, we got married in Kenya and my husband wanted to move here. Yeah. He was already, he was, um, he was born here anyway. So in those days, there was no visa oh, issues he and was born all in the, the other stuff. So he was born in the UK, but he's okay. Kenyan. Yes, ah, he's okay, okay. As well. but um, yeah, so we came together, yeah, and uh, yeah, here we are 30 years later. Three, so you basically, you basically moved to the UK because of your husband, yes. Ah, okay, okay, yeah, is, yeah, um, yeah, on and and um, you all your children were born there. You have three children, I have three children, yeah, and they were born, and I have born. I've got uh, two boys and I've got a girl, okay, okay, yes. And, and, so, and my firstborn son now has got two sons. He's got two two beautiful uh, sons. Oh, so you're already a show show. I am. I am a show show. <laughs> I am a grandma. Yeah, that's, that's, that's <laughs> and nice. And I'm loving it. Yeah, and I'm loving it. I can imagine. It's it's a different thing. Um, your children and your grandchildren. I think you you relate to them differently. You spoil them. Do you spoil your grandchildren? I think I do, but I don't think I do enough because they don't live so close to me. They live in a, in a different city called yeah. Bristol. I don't see them as often as I would, I would love to see them. But because um, of the distance, obviously. But yeah, we are, every time there's an event, there's an occasion, we're always together. Ah, okay. But I think this, this COVID has made it really worse, really, you know, really miss them because now we can only communicate on Zoom. I know, and, I know. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, yeah, I love them very much. We are very, very close. Very ah, close. Yeah. That's nice. And then, um, so I'm, I'm preparing the, the, the potatoes now. I had already okay. cooked them before. So I'm mm -hmm. cutting nice um, round pieces, not so thin. Okay. And yeah, I'll be preparing the, the um, you know, the, the, the butter for, for the bajias. And what I use is um, uh, gram flour mm -hmm. and I use white um, wheat flour and I also use rice flour. Okay. So rice flour makes them crispy. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's why I, I combine all that. And then I put in some, some herbs. And, but before we talk about the food, we are interested in knowing <laughs> something about you because the food, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll send the recipe later um, yes. on uh, Carol's, um, Chef Carol's Recipes and More uh, group. That's a Karibuni Jikoni group. So if you're interested in knowing what we cook today, just uh, check in the group and you'll find the recipes. So uh, I'm going to it. Yeah, uh -huh. you, uh, you, you co-authored um, volume one of the Awe book and I read it. It's a beautiful book. They, it has nice, nice stories of phenomenal women. So if you haven't gotten one, do that. And yeah. One boy, you, you, you wrote that you always wanted to put on a graduation gown. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I found that interesting. And, and, you know, you have now done it more than once because you, have, um, you also have a master's. Yeah. And your CV is so impressive. I'll not start um, listing everything because you can be here for about two hours. <laughs> And how, how, how is it for you? What's, what's that feeling when you accomplish what you always wanted to, to have or to do? Oh my gosh. It is just, it was beautiful. It is the most beautiful moment in your life because this was your self, 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 um, okay. achievement. Yeah. And, uh, and yes, I remember, and I'll go back to my show show that show show who's passed away. Mm. She went to Ngumbaro when Ngumbaro is uh, adult education. Yeah, yeah. When, when, when my grandfather died, he, mm -hmm. he, he was a land, he was a, he was a landlord, so he had houses that he was renting out. Then my show, show realized that, okay, now I need to be in charge of my houses. Yeah. The first thing he did, the first thing she did is she looked for uh, Ngumbaro, a place where she can understand maths, she can understand accounting. Wow. Do you know she did that at the age of 70? At the age of 70. At the, went, age of 70. at the age of 70. She went back to Ngumbaro at the age of 70. Wow. And I, rem and I always remember how we used to clap for her because she always used to come back, come back and say, I am number one today. I am number one. <laughs> and she reminded wow. me, don't let anyone say there is an age limit to education. No. no and no, I no. remember telling her, Shosho, one of the things I really want to, to do is to see myself wearing those uh, graduation gowns that I see people wearing with their hats on. Yeah, yeah. And, she said, and who told you that you cannot do it? So, so she always told me that. But also, my mom and dad, uh, they 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 are so so keen on us getting good education. So okay. They encouraged us. They really encouraged us to go to to good schools. You know, and I, in the book I've talked about that. Yeah. But honestly, that to me was first and foremost. That age has got no limit. You can do your degree. So how old were you? How old were you when you did your first degree? So my first degree, I was in my forties. You were in your forties. In my forties, and okay. then obviously now I've done my masters in my. <clears throat> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, that's okay. We <laughs> yeah, in my fifty something. You know, I'm on level five. Yeah, we are now level fifty something. We, the, the number after fifty. Yeah, no, 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 there, there. So, yeah, so, um, and, and it was, to me, it was, it was a great achievement because, because first and foremost, you don't, you don't actually realize uh, the potential when you are, have a good education, but also it's the fact that this will be your self-achievement. You are the one working so hard on doing that's true, getting, yeah, that yeah. skill. Mm. And that skill, it doesn't matter what degree you get, that piece of paper will help you in your next, if anybody, if you're looking for work, if anybody wants to see who really is this person, yeah, yeah. showing them that 
anybody that piece of paper mm. for a degree in something. It doesn't matter what. It doesn't it matter. Goes yeah, along, that's... It goes a long way. It yeah. goes a long way. Yeah, I know so, because um, I, I studied in Kenya and when I, yeah. I came to Germany, mm -hmm. when I started doing my, my chef apprenticeship and, uh, you know, having studied law, one would think it would not help in any way. But it did because I, I got one year cut off because of my studies. So yes. what you're saying is true. When you have that paper, it helps. It doesn't really matter. And that you, you don't have to think like, uh, you know, I'm going into a different field. Yes. It's, it's, uh, it's worth having it. It's worth, definitely worth having it. And even, yeah. if, even if it's not a degree level, but at least mm -hmm. have a skill that somebody will see on the piece of paper that yeah. it is it mm -hmm. is, is you know it is you it's your achievement yeah um, and and I, and yes you're right because there are some careers that people don't never never see them as taking you any far but now you you just realize how wrong they are i remember i wanted to i mean for me in my time i used to think i want to be a nurse i want to be a teacher and then I thought, oh, maybe I should just be a hairdresser. And you know, it's like, a hairdresser, what will you be doing with hairdressing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and look how we people doing hairdressing, they're, they're, they're really doing well in their lives. They're bringing up their families with even hairdressing because they've got that certificate to show. I know. And you know what? They're I skilled. It doesn't matter what you're doing. Do it well. Do it well. Be excellent. Well, with a passion. Whatever you're, you're doing. And uh, yeah. You Definitely can excel with in any field. You can excel yeah. in any field. Yeah, yeah. When you're yeah. passionate about it, and um, you know. So, uh, you, your first degree, what what was that? What did you? So, my first degree was uh, computer studies. So it was business okay. and IT solutions. So in the certificate, so said computer studies, mm -hmm. and I did that here at uh, in England, uh, university okay. university of Hertfordshire. And uh, yeah, so, and yeah, but my, my career in Kenya was nowhere near computers. It was, mm. I was in finance, so I, was, I used to, to work in a bank. And, you uh, in a place bank in, in Kenya? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 it used to be called Pioneer Bank in Kenya. Ah, okay. Yes, but when I moved here, I, I started my, when I did my computer studies, which sort of came by fluke because I was working as an administrator in an IT department. Okay. And then the calls used to come to me. And uh -huh. then the engineers will say, one boy, anybody who calls, tell them you, they, this is how they need to fix their problem. Mm. Computers. And yeah. we are talking, when I talk about computers, I'm talking about DOS, V2, those, I don't even know if you know that, but these are old applications. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> what the perfect, I know, it is old. Yeah, so, yeah. So I was like, so the next thing I was like, okay, I need to really learn about this. I got my interest of IT from working in that department. Mm. And yeah. then they realized I was good. And then they created mm. an IT help desk. And one boy was an IT help desk person working there. So IT wow. came to me just out of chance. <laughs> and, and I used the opportunity fully. <laughs> wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's wonderful. And then you did your master's? And then my master's came much late, actually, this, yeah. uh, this uh, last, is it last year or this year? That last year, actually, yeah. Mm. So that one is just something I wanted to do to, to improve my project management skills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, That's yeah, so I, I pursued my master's in project management practice. Yeah. And, and now I can say I've got an MSc in front of my signature. <laughs> wow, wow. That's so, uh... And, and, and again, it's just opportunities. It's seeing the opportunities and just take them on, you know. Mm. The company offers you to do your course, do it. Yeah, yeah. So and do it. Take that opportunity. Yeah. I am so impressed with that because I know um, we always think you work in, uh, in, in the construction industry. And when people hear about construction, it's, uh, it's a man's world, you know. Yeah. And uh, how is it? For you working there as as a woman and having such a high rank and you know and a black woman at that one thing that um many think about the construction industry it is yeah. very male dominated and yes. i can tell you and i can tell you even now it is still very male dominated yeah 
uh, they are working on that. They have they, quite a few of the construction companies have now created a diversity and inclusion departments mm -hmm. where they sort of try and balance. Yeah. But unless unless we the female gender want to get involved working in the construction industry, mm. having a diversity and inclusion team to try and encourage us might still not be enough. So it is a field that we look at it as if it is just, you know, still toed boots, as you're saying, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, with having um, your, you know, your helmets on. It's mm. not glamorous. It's very glamorous. They should see me when I'm going to work. I'm a very glamorous woman. I have my nice stilettos and my suit and I'm going to work in the construction industry. <laughs> I, you know, one can't imagine that because you always think, you know, they have this heavy cap. Uh, yeah. Boots, uh, but you you are in the office, so you deal with, uh, with the IT. You are in the IT Section. No, I, I actually, so as a project manager, you can't just sit in the office. You need to go to the projects the actual, where the actual projects are happening. Yeah. Okay. So I, I drive a lot and I yeah. will go to those construction sites. Yes, I will, I will drive there with my stilettos and my suit. Then but in the, the boot of, in the boot of my car, I have my PPE. <laughs> <laughs> I've got my helmet. I've got yeah. my glasses. I've got my gloves. I've got my steel-toed boots. Yeah. And, so and I come out from my car and I change. I just oh. put all those things on top of my suit. Yeah, but the, the, the question for me is being in the UK, that's, that's not Kenya, and being yes. in, a, in, in a field that is so male-dominated, and you are a woman, I'm, I'm sure it's not the team you're working with is not full of women, like you said. No. And, and you also have, um, you're also a black woman. So do you feel like you get respected the way you should in your position? Maybe because I've been, yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's, it's not very easy in most cases, especially when you're working with people who don't really know you. Um, but again, uh, remember, I have worked in this organization for, for, for a while now, and, yeah. and they have known me for a long, long time. So mm -hmm. my work is respected. And okay. yes, there are times that I would organize a meeting and then I'll be there seated and then they'll, the men will walk in and they'll wonder, okay, uh, who's chairing the meeting and, and, and I'll introduce myself as Wambui, the organizer and the, the one managing this particular project and there's a bit of a shock and straight yeah. away, I don't wait for face. that, yes, the facial, but I don't wait for that, I go straight to my professional way yeah. of working straight away to the points that I'm raising, the projects, we sign, we agree with the agreements of what yeah, would yeah. you want to do, what I, kind of IT requirements do you have, and we move on. Mm. So I, I, I have learned not to look so much at those kind of, yeah. of, 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 uh, of scenarios of uh, thinking, yes, you're a woman, you're a black woman, I need to work a little bit. No, I don't need to work a little bit harder. I you know myself. Have. You, you I know myself. I have the confidence. I don't need to prove to anybody that I, as a black woman, I can work hard. I know I can work hard. So that confidence in itself for me, it sort yeah. of stops that, that to me, it can also become a barrier. When, when you walk in, in an office as a black woman, yeah. or if I will go in a construction site thinking I'm a woman because there are so many men, mm. then that can actually it can actually interfere with your profession and in what you're going to give to them because That's you've true. got all this negativity that is also creeping in your mind. Yeah, yeah. So the negativity can come in two forms. So you end up becoming either aggressive in your way of talking to these people to yeah. prove that you can yeah. do the job yeah. or you should change yourself by being too, you know, the listening type and, yeah. and, and really not taking in what the, 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 the conversation is all about. Yeah. So you live there actually not having done your job. So I have moved away from that. When I go to an office, and this is what I'll advise anybody, it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, doesn't matter which country you're in, go yeah. with your head high. Go with your head high. Yes, you will get those barriers. Go with your head knowing that you can perform that job. Yeah. Because and you push yourself because yeah. you know yourself. Yeah. And yeah. Just, just, just go for it because um, at the end of the day, uh, it is you who is going to push yourself. Nobody else will. 
that's true that's nobody true. else will yeah. so it is tough um it is tough but i have as i said i've been there for a long time and i know i can you know i am a short not a very tall woman as i said in my book i'm five foot three and i'll be talking to a six foot yeah i know we, we, five foot eleven person but you know what at the end of the day we are on the same pie we are on the same pie yeah. we are on the same level Oh, so yeah. that in itself to me is, is enough. Is mm. okay, yeah, how, I what can I do for you? <laughs> we met yeah. we met uh, last year at yes. the, uh, the AWE event. Yes. And you know that's that's the first time I saw you. I had heard about you, I had read about you, and we had so much fun. That was so we had a lot of fun, yes. Oh wow, there was a lot of dancing and uh, you know the whole event was organized so well. Yes. You, you co-founded um Awe with um Joy. Yeah. And uh, you work together. In, yes. in uh, you know it's um, important to you to bring together people in, in um in the diaspora. And these are women who come together and get to know each other. Because after that, you know, I got to know so many women. Yes. And um, I, I, I... That's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose. Yeah. I, I was living in Germany for... Well, I, I'm now 15 years in Germany. But mm -hmm. last year is when I came to know, you know, so many women in different fields. Yeah. So uh, what you also do is a lot of volunteer work. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're a board member of Girls Empowerment Initiative in the UK. Mm -hmm. So um, what does this organization do? And, um, you know, is it only for African girls? No, no, it's not. Um, so this organization was started by a very good friend of ours uh, who we also nominated as uh, African Women in Europe, the main award ceremony in mm -hmm. 20... Uh, 2018 she was our overall winner of that award okay her name is, um, her name is dr musvare uh Makoni. Mm -hmm. i don't she, know her. she you will get to know her yeah so she started um girl empowerment global Okay. And this is even even before i really got to know her on a personal personal level i used to hear mm -hmm. about the work she's doing for girls, not just uh, here in UK, but also in um, in Zimbabwe. She comes from Zimbabwe. Okay, okay. So, um, Musvare has got a passion with with uh, working with girls, empowering girls, because she has her own story of mm -hmm. how why she does what she does. Okay. And she has um, managed to get many of these girls in careers career ladders, employment opportunities for them through her center. So she's got a center in Basilton. And so many girls, so many schools, they come through there and she teaches them about, you know, so many issues relating to girls, which also includes female FGM. She talks okay. to them about FGM, female she talks to them about Ali, you know. Mm -hmm. Female genital mutilation. Female genital mutilation. Yeah. And he also talks about um, girl child, you know, early marriages. Yeah. And also she talks to them about confident as a woman and the fact that you can progress to whatever level you wish to progress in your career. Mm -hmm. To the board member positions and being directors and being um, founders of your own organization. Yeah. So it's a big organization, it's a really big organization. So I work closely with her. We meet maybe a few times a year to just see what has been achieved this year. Yeah. So we look at the different projects. So she's an amazing lady that you really need to meet. She's spoken in African Women in Europe events several times. And uh, yeah, very powerful, very powerful. Someday, I hope to meet her. Yes. It's a pity that uh, all the um, our events uh, have been cancelled this year. I'm afraid so. So yeah. COVID-19 has uh, sort of affected displaced our, our project. Yeah. I know. But, um, better safe than sorry, really, isn't it? So. Yeah. So, um, Wamboy, let's talk about uh, a topic that uh, you, you're so, so passionate about. Mm -hmm. You talk very passionately about blind people so yes um, 
And I'm wondering when, when did this, I, I can call it a love affair. When did this, did, did this <laughs> love affair begin? Love affair started with a blind girl. <laughs> Yeah. Love Affair started with a blind girl called yeah. Jennifer. Yes. And uh, yes, yeah, so I was uh, one of, uh, I was nominated for an award here. The, you saw the, the role model of the year for women for Africa. And it's, and again, that is because of the way I encourage women to talk and converse with each other and support each other. Yeah. And also African women in Europe. Mm -hmm. So they, they saw the passion of, of that community. I have very strong community cohesion but I just want people to be talking to, together. So in one of those events, I was nominated for the role model of the year. And, um, and, and so I met this lady called Masi, and she she's, uh, has a, a magazine in Kenya called uh, Disability is Not, no, uh, yeah, Disability is Not Inability. Okay. Magazine. Mm -hmm. And she had been nominated for the international award for her work with uh, bringing awareness about the disabled in Kenya. Okay. So we started talking and she's the one who told me, um, told me more about the, the, the disabled in Kenya. To be honest, it's, and I felt so sad that I really never looked at the disability. What happens to the disabled? How are they um, supported? And I said, so I followed her up after the, the award ceremony and, and I said, I really saw, and I just asked a question, what happens to like blind people? I know they seek a school of the blind, you know, what happens when you, you have a blind child? How yeah. does the mother and the father get support? And mm -hmm. she's like, oh boy, you're asking these questions, but let me just introduce you to this girl. So she introduced me to Jennifer. Okay. And Jennifer opened up my eyes on the flight of the blind persons. So, so much, Jennifer, so uh, much. She lives, in, she lives in Kenya. So Jennifer lives in Kenya, mm -hmm. and I took her under my wings, actually on a personal level, mm -hmm. and just educating her, providing her provisions for laptop, providing her provisions for her work, her education, and even sometimes even for her well-being. Yeah. And and I learned so much about the blind at that time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because I would say, okay, so what do we need to do to get you this particular information or this particular education? Mm. What happens when there's, you know, when it's raining and when it's, you know, how do you get help crossing the road? You know, Kenya, they don't have traffic lights. So yeah. just those kind of conversations, I was like, hey, they rely on other people next to yeah. them to help them. Yeah, not like here in Europe where... Not like here, you've got traffic lights, yeah, you've got yeah. the roads that have got, you know, the little bubbles, yeah, which people yeah. don't realize those bubbles that you see on the road that some, you know, ladies with their stilettos find them very annoying because they, they have to walk on, on, on these bubbles when they're crossing the road. But actually, yeah. those bubbles are helping the blind. Do they? they? Help the blind, yes. Good to know that. I did know that. <laughs> Because they know they have reached at the end, they are reaching. They are reaching towards wow. closer to the edge of the road. Yeah, and, and even the the button on the side, and the yeah. countdown. If you look at most of the traffic lights, the the blind go underneath the that the, 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 those countdown uh, traffic lights. Yeah, and there's a buzz there. So that buzz will tell when it stops. They know it's the green man is on, and they just cross the road. They don't need to depend on other people. That's true, but that those is facilities are here. Those facilities are not going to be in Africa for a long, long time. So, Panaka Foundation was raised for me to see what can I do, well, how can I help in mm. Kenya, and 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 my passion came through 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 this girl, but also so much that I have learned about the blind in Kenya. There is mm. over forty five thousand blind in Kenya. I only know about Kenya, uh, Thika School for the Blind, yeah. and, the, and I only I only knew obviously when I was in Kenya, mm. and Machako's um, School for the Blind. So what happens about these children who are born in between? You know, Kericho, Machako's, Kiambu. Where are they going? Who is looking after them? How are they getting yeah. their support? Yeah. So you, and, you uh, just to understand this, you founded Panaka, uh, Panaka Foundation, Foundation. Okay, only um, with, the, with, the, with, with the idea of helping the blind. Of helping the blind, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, for education, they see how I can fund them, those who are disadvantaged with their education, yeah. but also working it in partnership with Kenya Society for the Blind. Mm -hmm. who have been, I've, um, um, I've been working with them because obviously they are one of the biggest societies in Kenya and I yeah. needed to start somewhere to understand yeah. 
to understand the flight of, um, of, a, of a blind person in Kenya. And uh, yeah, so we've been working closely with them. Um, I've, I had to go to Kenya yeah. and spend a day training with them as I walking as a, yes, I had to walk blindfolded. I had to, Solomon had to train me to oh. how the braille is used, you know, yeah. had, to, had to be blindfolded. And then I had to walk the whole compound blindfolded. Mm -hmm. and, and by the time you finish that training, you realize, yes, here there is work. There is a lot of work that to be done. Needs to be done. Yeah, to help them, to help them to live and to help them lead yeah. a normal life. Normal to help life. them lead a normal life. Yeah. Mm. And, so and, yes, yeah, so I do have a passion, and yeah, that's why I do galas, gala yeah. to raise you money. You organize, you organize events uh, to raise money. Yeah. Yes. And um, I've, I haven't uh, been able to come to any of those events, but I see them. Okay, you will. So nice galas, dinner galas. Yes. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely make a point of coming to one of them. Yes, you should, because like now, this was last year's gala, yeah. where we, we had, um, and, and I had these wonderful people that I could auction stuff, so I could get, I could raise wow. money through auctions. Yeah. Um, so there's hotels, there's, mm. if you want to go to a nice hotel, and if you want to buy some nice chocolate, and that was quite an eye-opener for me as well. But I also organize um, go, go, golf tournaments. Through, okay. By approaching the golf courses. Yeah. And I would ask, can we play here for this amount of money? And then, and then they they come and and then they come, they play at a cheaper rate, and then yeah. they they donate funds to me. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I organize golf tournaments, and then the other thing that we organized was walk a mile in my shoes. We just have a few people, um, blindfolded. Yeah. And they have to walk obviously guided by somebody who can see just to have the experience of a blind person wow yeah and, and we also raise money in that in that way uh, so where do and you I, organize these events so this one i organized uh, the the golf tournament we had organized in kenya yeah in Limuru, um and then Limuru golf course although it never even happened because of it was at the same time there was the um, Kenyan masters at the same time, but okay. nevertheless, it still went ahead after that, uh, but I was not able to play there, I had to come back. But then we've also, I also organized it here in UK. Okay. And uh, through the golf courses in my local where I work, but yeah. also through the Kenya Society, Kenya Golf Society also helped me raise, there's a big Kenya Golf Society here in UK. So okay. they helped, they helped, they, they also helped me raise money. Yeah. And um, yeah, and, and also remember, I am I also partner with Hearts Vision Loss. So I work with a, an organization for the blind that's called Hearts Vision Loss. So Hearts Vision Loss is based in UK. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we just volunteer taking them the blind shopping. So we have we have our own dedicated blind people here in like I've got my own dedicated here in in my area. So okay. if they want to go to a big shopping center, yeah. They will you, call me. You, you go with I them. Will, I will go with them. Yeah. Uh -huh, so okay. they do their shopping. Yeah. I take them back home safely. I make sure that their all their groceries are in where they're supposed to be. Once they once their groceries are in their house, it is their yeah. house. I don't need to go in with them and you know. So it's it's uh, yeah. once it's inside, then they know their home. They know where yeah. everything. They goes. can move around their own thing. They can move around their houses. Yeah. 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 So yeah. So I work with Hearts Vision Loss, which has been. Uh, it's an amazing um, organization as well here in UK that covers the Hertfordshire area. So Hertz is short for Hertfordshire, which is the county that I live in. Ah, okay. Yeah. Like more like a, a district. Like in Kenya, That's they nice. call it district. So here ah. they call it Hertfordshire. Yeah. Yeah. Hertfordshire County Council. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yes. you, are, you are trying to raise money for an emboza. Yeah, I was trying to raise money for an embolsa. I still did not get the m amount that I needed, but I think because of this COVID, we mm -hmm. would still have been able to purchase. Because obviously, as I said, I'm working in partnership with the other organizations. Yeah. Um, us, so we are still to purchase it. The money is there waiting. <laughs> First, tell us what is an embolsa before we continue. Ah, embolsa. <laughs> yeah. So it's a braille. It's a braille photocopier. Okay. And and what it does is um. 
I should have come with my braille. So braille is the language that the blind people use. Yeah. It's little, it's dots. It's, yeah. It's little dots. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got their own ABC, but they fill it in dots. Mm-hmm. Um, now, for them to be able to spend, instead of them just listening, because you see, they only listen. For those who have uh, laptops, for those who have audio, they listen to maybe uh, a a tutor and then they just listen. But sometimes for those who have learned the language, it's good for them to print out just the same way me and you will print out some work Mm -hmm. and read it at your own time. Yeah. yeah. So the Braille and Bosa is for that purpose. So instead of them listening, they can print out this work Mm -hmm. and then they can just read it themselves using their Uh, own hands. Okay. At their own pace. Mm-hmm. So I'll just clean that my That is hands what it's called. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I really would love, my dream is to see, yes, we have technology, and yes, technology is bringing a lot of these things and makes them work better for the disabled and the blind. Yeah. But still, I still think we need Braille photocopiers because the more we have these languages in libraries, um, also introduced there in schools. I, I think even just um, mainstream schools should have Braille photocopiers yeah. so that a child that is blind does not need to go to a school specially for the blind. They can go to a normal school. They just need to make sure that they have roots, yeah. good roots for them in terms of walking. Yeah, yeah. And as long as there's a Braille photocopier there and they've got their... Um, technology which is also with the audio to use yeah. it helps them it helps them to balance their studying that they will start at their own time uh, but they are expensive so, they are expensive because it's all about supply and demand so they're okay. very expensive they're very oh, they're very expensive pieces of equipment uh, so like this this embos that we were raising money for it was gonna cost fourteen thousand in pounds okay. and then oh, plus yeah. the time yeah and because it was going to be purchased from here Mm. And then plus maintenance and support. It was coming to something like 17,000. So it is quite expensive. Um, oh. and, and you need, you, you, you also need donors to be able to help you um, buy this type of equipment. Yeah. Um, and the suppliers also are not that many. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a catch-22, you know, working with the yeah. suppliers to give yeah. you a, a good deal. So that's my chutney. Oh, wow. Coconut and tomatoes. Lovely, and, uh, yeah. The onions are already done. Oh, okay. So I have to remove the, the potatoes now. Brilliant. Yeah, so you, you, you're still looking for, for people who can help, people who can... Yeah, you know? we look for donors, we look for grants. Mm. But uh, yeah, but this year, yeah, this year that is... So I'm working on things like that. But honestly, because of where we are now in 2020... Yeah. A lot of things have sort of come to a halt. So my, my, I was supposed to have a, another gala in December, 5th of December this year. Mm. I haven't cancelled it yet. <laughs> I'm hoping it can still go ahead. But with social distancing, I doubt that this I, will go ahead. I think all the events that are supposed to be for this year, they will be, they'll be out. So yeah. let me see what I can do virtual. Yeah. Virtual, you know, I can have like a virtual gala. Yeah, you could do that. And so I can organize a virtual gala. Invite me to cook. <laughs> and you can cook. So we can all be watching you cook. Yeah, exactly. And we can yeah. dress up as well. We can do that. We can do so that. So that sounds like a good deal. Yeah. It, it does. I'll be, I'll, I'll be in if uh, some of things, if you organize something like that. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a blind person mm-hmm. in our society, you know. Um, do you think that they are neglected? Um, and you know, because they can't see that people think they are they are less intelligent, that you know, they cannot they cannot contribute to the society the way everybody else does. <laughs> yeah, we we what I can say is that anybody, whether you're blind, whether you have some form of disability, your intelligence and the skills that God has given you will come out with the help of support. If you are, if you are bringing up a child and they're not getting any form of education, oh. any form of support, yeah. they will then 
have to be relying on their natural skills. But if you can boost them with some form of education and support, anybody can, anybody can do well in life. Yeah. So the blind people, because you cannot see them, it doesn't mean that they don't know you're there. You just need to start talking. They are very intelligent. Anyway, the ones I have met are very, very intelligent. Uh, because you, you see... I love something you said. You said they listen with, your heart, with their hearts. They listen with their heart because they can hear you. They know when you're under stress. Mm. They know when you're not a good person just by the tone of your voice. So they are very good with things like that. And that is why when you have, what I have seen and what I have learned is in a class, classroom, and that is why to me I would like the blind, to, blind children to be in a mainstream, mainstream school. Yeah. They are probably the only ones who are really listening to the teacher and taking it all in. That's true. That's true. Because they cannot be, you know, they, they cannot look anywhere else. They cannot. Yes. Yeah. So they can, they can, they are only listening. Yes, they can hear these kids laughing at the back and joking and, and they will take part in that. Mm. But honestly, when they focus on, yes, I need to listen to the teacher. That is what they'll do. So the ones that I have met are very, very, I can tell you, Jennifer, and you're going to interview her. Yeah. When she speaks, she's one very intelligent lady. I would love, I would love she's to. She's studying, but she's very intelligent and very humble. Mm. But they're also very, um, they, they also have, they, they've, got, they've got that humbleness, but also they have compassion. The ones I have met have got this compassion because they, they know that you've got to have compassion. And for them, being in that situation of that vulnerability, of mm. knowing who is coming, who is looking at them. Yeah. That humbleness, I think that compassion is, is already grows in them. Mm. So you, you just love a, a blind person. If you don't look at, if you don't think about the way their, 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 face, their face or what your, your, your thoughts about being blind is and mm. just focus on this person in front of you, fellow human being. Yeah, yeah. They're amazing. I love, I love, I love all people, mm. but I, I, I have a special love for my passion for supporting the blind. Yeah. So what, what do you think we should all know about you? You've been working with them for a long time. What do you so think? in my gala, yeah, yeah, in my gala, one of the things I said is that when you see a blind person approaching yeah. you, yeah. or even when you're just doing your walks and you realize somebody is blind, say hello. They, they, they would love to hear a voice, a, fun, a f friendly voice. Uh, ask them, do you need some support? Some of them could be, look, they've lost direction to where they're going. Just ask them, yeah. would you like some help? Uh, um, cross the road with them. Yeah. See what else, you know, just have a conversation with them. Uh, I am aware that there's also a lot of loneliness for the, the blind because they, they, if they're not hearing familiar and yeah. friendly voices uh, they live in a world of their own so support them but then if a gala like this one that i'm organizing yeah support where you can if you cannot attend at least say yeah. okay just let me support some someone yeah and send some money and money and, and and the money will be used for that purpose uh, and and i think this is just and also just Try and get some interest on 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 the blind or disabled. Yeah. Any person disabled, get some interest. Get to know them. Uh, and uh, how about um, books? You know, we we have so many books that we can we can read. I can choose from millions of books, story books. Uh, are there books that uh, you know they have to be in braille, the the language? Do they? Thank God to no. Thank God to technology. They now have audio. The Audible, you know, the Kindle yes. books. Yes. And, and so mm. they have, most of them rely on that. Mm. And also there are software that they use, like for Jennifer, I had to, and, and two other that I support, I had to buy them. Uh, it's, a, it's a software that, that, they, that they can use. Yeah. And ah, I'm even forgetting the name now. And um, so this software is installed on their laptop. So mm. whatever they type, if they type, yeah. They hear it. it. They hear it, yeah. Okay. And, and the good thing is now with the new laptops, um, they have to have accessibility for the, the, the disabled. So mm -hmm. most of the laptops now, like Windows, if all these Windows 10, 
they yeah. they come with that software okay okay yeah but they're very basic software but for them to be able to really do what they need to do they need very specialized softwares that can do a lot more for them yeah yeah wow yeah but well, yes softwares yeah that's uh, and braille learning braille remember the white cane they need the white canes to maneuver so they don't end up in a ditch yeah. so those white canes are very very interesting to learn as well find out if you meet a blind person in kenya mm. do they need a cane think about yeah. maybe i should help for this person to get a cane yeah find out where the canes are being sold yeah. So if we, if we, uh, if somebody wants to to donate or to maybe contribute, where can I go? Where do I find the information? Um, so I've got a website called um, Fanaka Foundation UK dot org. Okay. Okay. It's got a donation so page in there. Can, uh, um, write the, the name of the um, website yeah. in the comments yeah. below. Yeah. Yeah. Then, so it's. Uh, Anaka Foundation UK dot org. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there you find um, information at, about uh, what you do, if any galas have been organized and everything is there. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Any any galas, any any events that I'm organizing, the donation page is all there. Uh, uh including, you know, different types of payment which would include PayPal or yeah. or you know, using yeah. your your card but also i'm on facebook all the time if somebody wants to know more about but you're on facebook organization i've got a fanaka foundation no i've got a fanaka foundation facebook page oh i didn't know that it's like a group yeah but it's like a group so it's okay, within okay. It's my a private name. group a group yes yeah okay and I, I i just add members there people actually have got so many members there so i also i also advertise in there yeah, or you okay. can come to my page one boy Wamboi Njao is my Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. And you can catch me there as well. Super. So, so Wamboi, what I have not um, said is uh, you have received many awards. And, <laughs> um, you know, I have one gathering of Africa's best award, Community Cohesion, yeah. Women for Africa Award, Role Model Category, Community Investment, Skanska Construction PLC, Honored Lifetime Achievement Award by Girl Child Global Initiative, the Lioness Award for Women, Outstanding Support and Empowerment of the African Women in Europe. Congratulations, Ombo. You're doing Thank you. a fantastic job. Yeah. Thank you so much for finding time to talk to us about the blind. And this is a topic that interests me now and I'll be happy if you informed us what is happening and the events you have and I'll always be, you know, ready and willing to do whatever you'd want me to do. Thank you so much and definitely we'll take you on on the virtual. And I've wow. done this. So, yeah, wow, that looks so beautiful. Yeah. And wow, and that, that's the chutney in the little pot, yeah, the Kenyan yeah. pot, wow. Yeah. Oh, I love the pot. Area. So that is how I would serve my bajiyas. <laughs> my, 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 that is so beautiful. <laughs> Beautifully you. served. Yeah, and thank you so it. much for the work that you're doing. You're making us now love our kitchens. Now I even learned, I've been learning how to bake. I've been uh, making wow. kushon tapas, as you can see. I am making yeah, kushon they're beautiful. I saw that on Facebook. <laughs> this is on, this so, is tie and dye. Yeah. A tie and dye type. Wow. Uh, I'm hoping to make a few more so I can uh, raise more money for my for my girls. Please my do. Please do. Um, and put so them on, on, on Facebook and uh, we can all share so that we can buy them and help those girls. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that is the whole purpose of my lovely sewing machine is to see mm. what I can learn and then maybe I can I can teach some young some young girls how to sew as well one day. <laughs> Beautiful job, one boy. Thank you so much for thank you so much, Carol, being on my show and continue the good work. We'll keep. I in will. Touch. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank and you. have a nice evening. And same to you. Continue enjoying your daughter's break, uh, uh, birthday. I know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So bye bye for yeah. now. See you next time on Let Me Cook Your Dish. It's always Tuesdays at seven p.m. CET. Now we have to talk about six p.m you know, UK time, you use yeah. uh, GMT, I think. Yes, yes, yeah, GMT. Or UTC, yeah. And 8 p.m. East African time. 
till next time bye bye and take care of yourselves thank you bye bye